Our focus today, as we continue this sermon series, what is on your Christmas list, is preparing for Christmas. What do we need to do to get ready to meet God during this Advent and Christmas season? What do we need to do as we do every year when we meet God, especially for many of us who go to Christmas Eve services, we meet God at the manger on Christmas Eve as we worship together in candlelight as we sing Silent Night. The problem with that from John's Gospel's perspective is simply this. Uh, the Gospel, according to John, doesn't have a manger. It doesn't have a Mary and a Joseph. It doesn't have angels and shepherds. The Gospel of John begins by telling us how we need to prepare ourselves to meet the Messiah. To, to let God come into our lives. There's no dreaming like uh, Joseph does in some of the gospel stories. John has God talking to God, so no angels visiting us. But it's a great story, and it's a story that we need to add to our Christmas list. Let's read together. John chapter 1, beginning with verse 6. God sent a man named John who came to tell all about the light and to lead all uh, people to have faith. John wasn't that light. He came to show other people the light and tell about it. The Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and temple helpers to ask John who he was, and he told them plainly, I am not the Messiah. And when they asked him if he were Elijah, he said no. And then when they asked if he were the prophet, he said, no, I am not. Finally, they said, well, who are you then? We have to have answers that we can take back to the people who sent us. Tell us who you are. And John answered in the words of the prophet Isaiah, I am only someone shouting in the desert, get ready the way for the Lord. Some Pharisees had also sent John and they asked him, why are you baptizing people if you are not the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet? And John told them, I use water to baptize people. But here with you is someone you don't know. Even though I came first, I am not good enough to untie his sandals. John said this as he was baptizing east of the Jordan River in Bethany. The word of God for the people of God. So the question I want us to focus on today is how are we going to prepare for Christmas? Are we going to prepare the same way we always have? Or are we going to try something different this year? You know, sometimes when you hear the same thing all the time, it starts to become less and less meaningful. Seems like every year around this time, I hear or preach a sermon about John the Baptist. But this year, as I was preparing my Christmas list, when I went and read the Bible and read the story of John the Baptist, something different hit me square right between the eyes. For instance, uh, you know how my phone has been blowing up, my email, if I turn on the TV or the radio, I'm hearing about a special Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Cyber Week sale, and it seems like it's the greatest sale ever, but is it ever really the only sale and the best one ever? No, it is not, because over and over again, we keep hearing the same thing, and so the advertising for the sales doesn't work on me like it used to. And I think the same thing can happen to us 
in the church. We can fall prey to our preparations for Christmas, uh, decorating, planning to exchange gifts, sing carols, send cards, and we don't take the time that John the Baptist is asking us to do and prepare our hearts and our minds and prepare the way of the Lord in the school. So today, I want us to meet John the Baptist again. We're told in several of the gospel stories that he wore clothing made of camel's hair. He had a leather belt. Uh, instead of eating meat and potatoes like I do, he ate locusts and honey, grasshoppers, in one story in the Bible. That is not like me at all. You can tell right away that he's not a salesman. Uh, John the Baptist doesn't try to sweet talk you or encourage you. He speaks to you and it hits you, as I said earlier, right between the eyes. He's not a politician trying to match his words to whatever the popular opinion is of the day. To me, this week he was a breath of fresh air and I hope he will be to you too. This is a guy that doesn't care what people say or think about him and his message is designed to cut right into your heart. And what, what would be that message? Uh, would, what would John the Baptist tell you or say to you? Would he say, don't forget about sharing and caring and loving as you prepare for Christmas? That is not what we read in the text a minute ago. It says, uh, John showed up in the desert and told everyone turn back to God and be baptized and then your sins will be forgiven. John tells us that we need to repent, that we need to turn our lives around. We need to change our ways. As I was reading this text, I felt like John was saying to me, Michael, there is something wrong with you. You need to change. God used John to communicate the need for turning around our lives and changing. And we need to tell God, I'm sorry, God. Please forgive me. Help me turn my life around. And that, John says, is what will prepare the path for the coming of the Messiah of Jesus into our lives in a more meaningful way. I was reading this text and thinking about this prepare the road for the coming of the Messiah. Prepare the road. Well, what would people think about when they heard that in John's time and in Jesus' time? And as you study and find out about that, the text uh, reminds you that when a king came to visit in the ancient world, the first thing they would do is send word to the city, and then what do you think the city that was going to get the king's visit would do? They would go out and repair the potholes in the road. They would make sure that it was straight and clear, and when the king came into town, it would be only the best. It was a metaphor John was using to tell those people, to tell them that they needed to make those same kinds of preparation in their own lives so that they could receive God. John gives us, all of us, all of those gathered back then when they were hearing his message for the first time, something essential. And that message is that we no longer have to just hope that things are going to get better because God, the Messiah, has come into the world. God is alive and here and has come to live with us and be with us. God has come into the world and John says to me, right between the eyes, Michael, you better get yourself ready. 
I've noticed recently and found out uh, yesterday that the disciple women did just this. They exchanged recipes right here in front of the fire yesterday. They brought cookies to each other and shared them, and they each shared their recipes for those cookies. And this is a time of year when we share recipes, something special for Christmas dinner, a special dessert, uh, a special way to make something. But obviously, in thinking about this being the time of year to share recipes, John the Baptist did not have any recipes that I have read other than locusts and honey. And I don't think any of you are going to prepare that for your Christmas dinner. I don't have any nods or yeses or nos. But what, though, is John's recipe for a successful Christmas? That's the question that I ask myself. What would John say the recipe for a successful Christmas would be? Well, according to our text this morning, there are two main ingredients for a successful Christmas. And they are a heart and a mind full of repentance and a heart full of Christ. A heart full of repentance and a heart full full of God and Jesus Christ. These two ingredients make up the recipe for John's successful time of preparation to receive the Lord, regardless of your circumstances. If you have turned your life around and asked for forgiveness for those things that you've done wrong, if you open your heart and your mind to God, then you are preparing the way for the Lord to enter into your life in a meaningful way. Your recipe is to open your heart and ask God to forgive you. Do that and you will be ready to meet God at the manger. You will be ready to meet God on Christmas Eve. You will be ready to meet God in your daily lives. That is a recipe we all can follow. Amen. Amen.